Hi, my name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about retrieval augmented generation for knowledge intensive NLP tasks. So let's get started. In the last video I talked about Realm. Realm was basically retrieval augmented model but a language model. It was meant for classification. A follow up work is RAG, retrieval augmented generation and as the name says it's basically a follow up of Realm for, but for natural language generation. It also combines parametric pre-trained model with a non-parametric retriever. However, in this case, the parametric pre-trained model is a sequence to sequence BART large model and the non-parametric retriever is basically uh, a BERT model, BERT based encoders. Okay. So uh, the retriever, uh, so as you can see here, let's say if your question is defined middle ear or you know if you want to verify if this is a correct fact or not, or if there is a entity and you want to create a jeopardy like question out of it, any of these three tasks can be actually considered as natural language generation tasks. This is a question answering task. This is basically a fact verification task and this is basically a question generation task. For each of those tasks, what you would typically do is to uh, take this thing and encode it using BERT. Now, by encoding it uh, using BERT, you get an encoding uh, using which you basically try to find matching documents from a large document store. Now you don't store the documents in a document store, but you would rather index them using, uh, uh, using in, in fact, something called the face index, which uses a hierarchical navigable small world or HNSW approximation. Now, basically what it does is to essentially very efficiently figure out matching documents given this query. Uh, once those matching documents are found, you take the original query queue, which is basically this text, and you take the matching documents which have been discovered and you pass them to your NLG model, natural language generation model, which in their case was a BERT large model, BART large model, right? So once you um, um, basically use BART large on this, you have two documents, let's say in this particular case, which you found as, as, as good augmentation to your original query, the BART large model uses all of them and then comes up with the desired response. In the question answering case, it would be an answer. In the fact verification case, it would basically be supports or contradicts, right? And in the jeopardy generation, jeopardy question generation case, it would be a question generated given the input entity. Okay. So in short, um, RAG model combines a parametric pre-trained NLG part large model, generator model, along with um, a non-parametric retriever, non-parametric retriever. The retriever in general contains two parts, a query encoder and essentially a generator. Uh, or a, a query encoder and a, and a document index. Right? So here the document index is basically uses the uh, MIPS uh, MIPS scheme, so uh, maximum inner product similarity, right, to find top K matching documents. Uh, in this particular case, you see two matching documents, but it can, uh, but uh, you know the experiments have been done using five or ten matching documents. The encoder is basically bird based encoder. Um, so the overall idea is to basically do end-to-end -end back propagation, and therefore uh, RAG model jointly trains both the retriever and generation uh, and the generator given various training documents, uh, training uh, examples. Uh, for example, for question answering, the training examples would contain X as the question and Y as the answer. Now you can actually run RAG uh, um, or train RAG in two different uh, ways, RAG sequence and RAG token. RAG sequence basically means that it is going to use the same document to predict each target token. Remember, you have to basically generate tokens. Now you could generate tokens using the same set of augmented documents, or you could basically use a different augmented document per token generation. Right. So if you are using the same set of augmented documents for every token, that's called as RAG sequence scheme of doing things. Uh, but if you are actually predicting each target token based on a different document uh, or different set of documents, it's called as a RAG token scheme. Uh, in uh, you know in the RAG sequence scheme, the generator produces the output sequence probability for each document that has been that that has been augmented, you know, which are then marginalized. So the way you do this is basically you find top K matching documents, and then one by one you pass that document with augmentation, uh, you know, along with the original query to the part model, generate a probability distribution. Then you pass second document, generate a probability distribution, third document, generate a probability distribution, and then you add up all of those probability distributions just to compute a marginalized probability, meaning you know the overall probability for each token. And then of course you choose uh, the token with the highest probability. Um, that's that. Now the RAC token model also does the similar stuff. It's just that for every token, it's basically going to choose a different set of top K documents. 
right? So, and uh, that's best. Uh, but and the generator uh, can choose content from several documents when producing an answer. So that's the interesting part about crack token model. That you know, for this talk token, I'm going to use different set of documents. For another token, I'm going to use different set of documents. Yeah. So how does Rack perform compared to BART and T5? Let's answer that. So um, uh, in their experiments, basically they used uh, knowledge sources Wikipedia and they took Wikipedia documents uh, um, yeah, and they divided them into 100 word chunks, thereby leading to an index uh, which indexes 21 million different document pieces. Yeah, they experimented on four different tasks, open domain question answering, abstractive question answering, jeopardy question generation and fact verification using popular data sets in those particular areas. So natural questions, trivia QA, web questions, curated track for open domain question answering, MS Marco for abstractive question answering, search QA for jeopardy question generation and fever for fact verification. Now, you know, this is an animation which quickly shows you how Jeopardy question generation happens uh, at runtime. Now, at test time, right, if, after the model has been trained, how does the uh, Jeopardy question generation happens for an input entity Hemingway, right? You want to basically generate a question for this input entity Hemingway, right? Now, the way Jeopardy works, Jeopardy is a popular game, which you have not heard about, right? It's a quiz game. Uh, the idea is that given this entity, I need to come up with a question which describes that entity but does not contain the entity name, of course. So therefore, a very good question could be this. Hemingway, what, you know, what is a good question for Hemingway? Well, the sun also rises is a novel by this author of A Farewell to Arms. So the idea is that this is author whose name is Hemingway, and the question is that he's an author um, uh, for uh, The Sun Also Rises and also an author of A Farewell to Arms. Okay, so how do you generate this question? Now, of course, one document does not contain both the books. So therefore, what you see is that the uh, first document that you see here is basically very useful to generate this book, A Farewell to Arms. The second document that you see here is very useful to generate the word, uh, the, the, the book, The Sun Also Rises. And therefore, you know, this RAG token model, which basically can, uh, can uh, augment information um, with the entity having way, um, and give it to Bart is really, really powerful because it can actually uh, take clues from multiple documents and form different parts of the answer that you see here. Okay. So let's also see this animation, how it works. So you take the Hemingway, you have a question encoder, which basically encodes the question in the same space as the original set of documents, uh, you know, in the index. You know, the index basically, of course, comprises document embeddings, taking, uh, you know, things from Wikipedia. So from Wikipedia, you basically index them in the same dense space. You find that, hey, these two documents are the most uh, uh, reasonable ones. And therefore, you take those two documents, pass them to BART, along with the, uh, the query Hemingway, uh, get a probability distribution, right? You get a probability distribution for every token. You get a probability distribution for the other document also. You figure out that the combined probability distribution gives you the as the most important token to be generated. You figure out that for the next one, it gives you sun as the most important uh, uh, you know, token to be generated and so on. And that's how you generate the sun also rises. It's a token, is, is a novel by this author of A Farewell to Arms. Okay. Now they found that uh, not just for question generation, this model actually performs really well, even for uh, MS Marco question answering. So you see uh, the question is defined middle year. Now, if you basically used RAG, uh, BART, you, if you just used BART, you know, the answer would be the middle year is the part of the year between the middle year and the nose. Huh? That doesn't make sense. How come middle year being between middle year and nose, right? But if you like, look at RAG token or the RAG sequence model, both of them are really awesome answers. Uh, factually correct and also lexically very rich, right? The middle year is the portion of the year internal to the year drum, or the middle year includes the tympanic cavity and the three ossicles, right? Now, even quantitatively, people found that the RAG model performed uh, way better compared to um, uh, T5 sequence-to-sequence -sequence models or even the earlier realm model or the DPR model, which are also retrieval augmented models, but not generation. They are more of classification kind of models, right? Uh, on human evaluation, they found that RAG is actually better compared to BART in terms of factuality as well as specificity, especially in terms of question generation task. Okay. So that's about uh, RAG. Um, uh, this animation has been taken from the Meta's blog, so please have a look at the blog as well if you get time. Okay, so in summary, RAG is retrieval augmented generation. It is better than standard natural language generation models like BART and uh, uh, like BART and T5, right? It combines the parametric pre-trained sequence to sequence BART large model with non-parametric retriever. And using RAG is super simple. It's just five lines of code at hugging face. So hugging face has this model integrated. Have a look at that and try out RAG uh, yourself. Hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or have a look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.